So good morning once again, and many thanks for joining. As um, many of you may already know, our co-founder of the FPMT uh, Foundation for the Preservation of the Mahayana Tradition, uh, Lama Zopa Rinpoche, is uh, sitting in meditation um, at Kopan in Nepal, Kopan Monastery, um, which is the Buddhist way to describe um, to describe uh, when great lamas have passed away. Um, he's sitting in Parinirvana. Uh, this happened last morning, so uh, we can we can use this session. Um, to, as a meditation on um, on uh, impermanence and uh, uh, to remind ourselves of the preciousness of human life and all of the opportunities that it offers uh, to awaken. So let's begin as we usually do with posture. Um, we can be seated on a chair or on a, a cushion uh, on the ground, uh, cross-legged if possible. Our back is pulled up straight, shoulders back, chest out and open to the world, signifying a certain willingness to engage with the world and not shut down, not close off. We are living in this world after all, we must engage with it, but how to engage is the question. Um, our hands can be right hand on top of the left and placed in our laps with our thumbs touching. This is a part of the nine point meditation posture that is described in the Mahayana tradition. Taking a moment to be aware of the breath, seated in this posture. Take a moment to feel our bodies seated our, our butt bones firmly planted on the cushion or chair, our knees or some part of our leg or foot maybe touching the ground. These are all sensations which we can bring our attention or awareness to. Let's take a few seconds to, to um, clear out our nostrils this morning. So several of you here have done this exercise before. This is a special breathing practice, in fact, uh, that His Holiness the Dalai Lama has written about in his book, How to See Yourself the Way You Really Are. He recommends starting meditation practices with this clearing of the air and as he calls them um, any uh, uh, negative energies that we may have accumulated um, or that may be stored in us uh, like any uh, disturbing energies uh, lust or hatred or anything that that disturbs our inner energies so we can think of it like that as we exhale and re, uh, refuel in a sense with oxygen ourselves with pure um, with with pure air so closing our left nostril let's 
Inhale, sorry, closing our right nostril. Let's inhale through our left. Close your left nostril and exhale through your right. We'll do this three times. Close your right nostril and inhale through your left. Close your left nostril and exhale through your right. Slow and controlled, full exhalations. Close your right nostril and inhale through your left. Close your left nostril and exhale through your right. Now on the other side, close your left nostril and inhale through your right. Close your right nostril and exhale through your left. Two more times. Close your left nostril and inhale through your right. Close your right nostril, exhale through your left. Last time. Close your left nostril, inhale through your right. Slowly. Close your right nostril and exhale through your left. Now with both nostrils, we'll take three deep breaths, thinking as we inhale, I'm inhaling, I'm exhaling, I'm inhaling, and I'm exhaling. I'm inhaling. And I'm exhaling. Now, bringing your hands back to your lap, take a few seconds to get comfortable in the seated posture again. Bring your attention to the breath, which you may feel most palpably in your stomach, in your chest, or perhaps at your nose. Feel the sensation of the breath entering and leaving your body. And we can begin, before we begin our focus practice, um, let's set a motivation. Um, as we said, um, the co-founder of FPMT is sitting in Nirvana at Kopan Monastery. He, he passed away yesterday morning, Lama Zopa Rinpoche. And one of the advices that that very senior Lamas have given is to meditate on um, impermanence. So we will do that in this session uh, in the form of a motivation. Uh, so I'm going to read out a little excerpt from from 
a little commentary, in fact, that Lama Zopa Rinpoche gave on impermanence and death. And we can think of this as our, as our strong motivation for practice. So I'll begin reading it out. It's called, the commentary is called, How Long is the Lifespan? Life is so fragile. Its nature is transitory. It's easy to see how it changes in only one year, a month, a week, a day, an hour, a minute, and second by second. There are 65 of the shortest instants in the time it takes to snap my fingers. And even in those short split seconds, life is changing. Why should I be surprised that life changes so much? That's natural. Let it happen, I could think to myself. To think in this way is very foolish and ignorant because as life is changing so quickly in those very short instants, I am becoming older. Some may say, that's natural. I become older. Let it happen. This is another wrong attitude, not caring about becoming old. Others want to deny the impermanent nature of their lives. They do not want to see the true nature of it at all. They try to disguise their appearance in the eyes of others who also play the same game. This is an absolutely vain attempt. Such actions are not the potential knowledge level of the human mind, and their creation is certainly not the purpose of the human rebirth from the Dharma point of view. No artificial effort can change 80 years into 16. Age can never decrease in the view of the truly enlightened mind, which fully realizes the samsaric body suffering because of its impermanent nature. I should worry about the changes of becoming old. Why should I worry? Because as years, months, days, split seconds are passing and I'm getting older, the perfect chance of attaining enlightenment given by my human rebirth is becoming exhausted and I'm getting closer to death. I have the right equipment a pilot, a spaceship, and enough fuel to make a trip around the universe and visit all the planets. But here I sit, engine running, burning up fuel, while my mind is distracted by other things. The longer my mind remains distracted, the more I miss the chance of seeing the planets as the fuel burns and time gets shorter. However, even this analogy does not adequately show the tragedy of wasting this precious human rebirth. So I think our motivation can be found in these few verses of prose. That um, that we may use the time that we have in this precious human life to train our minds to not waste our life energies or as Rinpoche says, our fuel on a distracted mind, a mind distracted by other things. Because the longer our mind remains distracted, the more we may miss the chance of becoming a fully enlightened 
being for the benefit of other sentient beings. So keeping this strong motivation to train our minds, let's begin with our shamatha practice, a foundational mind training practice to calm the mind stream of thoughts, emotions, memories, you name it. The many aspects and facets of the mind by, by consciously directing our minds to the breath. The breath is our anchor, a single point of focus, of concentration. Let's begin. We might take a little longer today since uh, this was a rather long motivation. So do stay on, those of us who can, till around 7.10. Let's begin. You remember to focus your attention very gently, lightly, let it fall on top of the breath as the breath moves in and out of the body.
Remember that if our mind wanders, we can keep bringing it back to the breath as many times as we need to.
that slowly bring our attention to the sounds around us. We can gently open our eyes, taking in the world around us, perhaps in a more mindful way than we did 20 minutes ago. Before we end this session, let's dedicate that the merits, the positive energies gathered through this practice can help us quickly attain the state of an enlightened being for the benefit of all sentient beings. We recognize the path and the work that needs to be done. So let's go through our day thinking of these these words from Lama Zopa on, on impermanence. Maybe I'll read a short little para to, to leave us with from the same commentary. He says, in summer, everything is beautiful. In winter, everything decays. Nothing is permanent. Nothing is def def definite. As the leaves change color in fall, Similarly, the whole country changes, the whole earth changes. Nothing is definite. Definite here means something always retaining the same form or color or aspect or always existing in the same way. Nothing is definite. So keeping these words on impermanence and the precious time we have today, moment by moment, breath by breath, to reflect on these words and see what rings true to us and how we could put these words into practice in a meaningful way in our lives. We've already begun with showing up for these daily shamatha meditations to train the mind. So let's take it one step further today and spend a little time thinking of impermanence. Thank you all very much for joining and see you tomorrow.